Morning, everybody. Morning. How's everybody doing besides Bill? <laughs> um, I was just given this information, so it might be a little rough in the communication. I was just informed that Sally Hollenbeck's daughter, Lori, yeah. passed away. Um, I don't know, Faith Love's mother. I don't, you see, we're not even sure about the lines of sanguination, but what we are sure of is that in a family unit, a loved one has passed. So uh, I'm going to add that to my notes for this morning. Sally. Sorry, I don't write very fast. Talk about a family that's been through the ringer the last 12 months. Wow. We need to remember them and embrace them and pray for them. Um, If you've noticed in your bulletins, we've got the blue notes there. Uh, Please take a moment and uh, fill those out. Let us know that you're here. If you have a prayer request, fill it out on the back. Uh, Put it in the plate, and the ushers will get the prayer request for me this morning to include in our morning prayer time. Also, a little added piece, you know, there's someone here named Al that's going to be having a birthday coming up here in a Sunday or two. When is it? When's the birthday party? It is the next Sunday? Next Sunday. They're wanting to do a celebration and after church bash for Al. So if you're going to be sticking around for that, just right on the bottom right corner, yes, Al. And that way we can give the family an accurate count. Uh, They asked us after we printed these up for Sunday service for we weren't able to include that. So just kind of write that you're going to be there and we will join the family in celebrating Al's birthday, which I'll bring the paddle. Number 80? I think my arms will get tired. Anyway. We can pass it around? Okay. Uh, a different, le- different level and understanding of a loving congregation, but okay, uh, that's, I'll go with that. Lots of stuff going on here in the life of the church. The Women's Book Club study is going to be taking place at the Maxfields on the 14th at 7 o'clock. The Book Club is going to be starting up, and it's going to be at Ida Junkins House this week uh, on the 17th. So if you're planning on being those, great. I uh, would love to have you come and participate. Yo. The, the book study at Maxfield that's, that's not right. No, it's between a rock and a place. Okay. So, everything else is right. Everything else is right. So it's a rock and a grace place. Okay, let me make... Thank you. Uh, rock and grace place. We'll see that that gets changed. Thank you. October is, our mission focus for October is the World Mission Offering. Um, This is an offering that helps support missions that are going on outside of the U.S. and across the globe. As you see by the little blurb in there, uh, over 1,800 missionaries in over 70 different countries uh, are serving both short-term and long-term missions. Short-term can be anything from three weeks to three years. Long-term starts at a minimum of three years and can go a lifetime or until they can't do it any longer. One of the things that we're seeing in missiological movements is that people are starting to do more short-term missions than long-term missionaries. To find a career missionary is becoming more of a challenge. And it's not because, you know, they don't have any interest. It's because they recognize that the specific call to leave their homeland and go to a place that God has chosen has changed. They're still called to serve. They're still called to serve in unique ways, but the long-term peace isn't there anymore. In fact, what they're finding is a lot of retired couples are actually going and doing short-term mission work. 
They're volunteering their time. They don't need to have as much funding. And they're going wherever God's calling them to go to serve in unique places and do amazing things of growing and sharing the gospel throughout the world. Our support of the World Mission Offering helps the movement of the gospel continue to the four corners of the globe. So when it comes to that time and we show another little video about how the work of World Mission is going on, hopefully you'll be able to share something. It doesn't have to be a big amount. Whatever you can give would be greatly helpful and appreciated. Big activity that we're launching for the first time here, happening towards the end of the month, October, uh, Sunday, October 26th. We are doing our... We're trying to do our very first trunk or treat. Now, this is a ministry. A ministry of providing a safe and secure place for children of the community to come and do Halloween. We're doing it a week before Halloween because trying to get everyone to come here was a real challenge. So we're actually giving the families for their kids to wear their costumes twice. And I don't know about you, but when I was little, I wanted to wear it as often as I could, and my parents said, nope, only when you go out. Yes, sir. I've been just been traveling throughout the community. I've noticed other churches are also doing it on Saturday or Sunday before Halloween. It's a common practice. This is the first time that we're doing it. So far, I saw out on the sign-up sheet that we have five cars signed up. We need a minimum of 15. The reason why, if you're wondering why, does five cars make it worthwhile to come out? It makes us feel good that we're doing something great, but does it make the community that we're trying to serve feel like we're taking them seriously? This is not about us. This is about providing for the children and the families that are on our borders. So if you're on the fence about coming out and doing this, Please make up your mind, because we cannot cancel this at the last minute. If we don't meet our quota, we cannot do it. And, okay, we'll find something else. But the people in your education team have been working very hard to coordinate and put this together. And they're getting the word out to the various places that we would be in contact with kids and families. So, know it's new, know it's different, know it calls us to kind of add a little something extra to our schedule, but... Talk about a cool way to love kids and their families. Provide a safe and secure place for them to come and be whatever they're going to be for Halloween. So if you can sign up for that, the board's out here. If you don't make it to the board, there's a place on the blue note to check off that you will participate in the trunk or treat, and we will make sure that we get you on record. That's all the announcements that I have for this morning. Do we have any minute people that need to say anything today? All right, then. Let us do what we came here to do, which was to worship our God and feel the power and the presence of the Spirit move among us. Let's start that by standing up and taking a couple minutes and greeting those around us. Say hello. Say it your own way. Have you ever wondered what it takes to send a missionary to a foreign country? It takes a lot of prayerful vision, planning, training, and partnering to send the right missionary for the right test to be effective in meeting a country's spiritual needs. And with your church's help, that's what international ministry does. Last time, I told you about the plight of the youth and college students in Macau, a special administrative region of China. Macau's pervasive casino industry has created rampant crime, addiction, and prostitution. It is an environment that actually discourages the younger generation from pursuing higher education and fulfilling work. God raised up Emerson and Ivy Wu to help them turn the tide. Emerson, a recent retired administrator, and Ivy, a newly ordained pastor, had prayed that God would open a door so that they could serve the Chinese people. After two years of study, partnering, and prayer, Emerson and Ivy left for Macau in faith, not knowing how God would use them, what struggles they would face, or even who they would minister to. 
They trusted that God would guide them, encourage them, and work powerfully through them. And He did.